Recording in progress. Um, yeah, happy to happy to answer any questions that they might have. All right, looks like we have three beautiful people here. Earl, Duncan, and Drew. Welcome. Welcome. I'm gonna share my screen while we wait. All right. Um, before we begin, maybe we'll just do a quick round of introductions. There's a small, there's just a small group of us here, so it should be pretty quick. Um, I'll start with, I guess, Eliza. Sorry to put you on the, on the, Eliza, can you hear me? Yeah, I can hear you. I want to do a quick introduction of yourself and maybe your program by any chance? Sure. Yeah. So my name's Eliza. I'm in the Bachelor of Public Relations program. Oh, cool. That's my program. Awesome. Earl? Can you hear me, Earl Kaiser? Uh, yeah. Uh, hello. Uh, I am Earl, and I'm currently in computer programming, two years diploma, and I am in... I'm currently at level three. Level three? What is that at the Waterloo campus? Oh, uh, yeah. Awesome. Nice to meet you, Earl. Duncan? Hi. Um, Hi. I'm in the, yeah, I'm Duncan. I'm first year in HRAC at Reuter. What, what is HRAC, sir? Um, heating, refrigeration, air conditioning. Oh, nice. Okay, cool. Welcome, Duncan. And, and Dhruv? Nice. Awesome. Well, happy to have you all here. Uh, thank you for joining us. Um, I am Nelson. I'm the president of CSI, and I was uh, previously in the Bachelor of Public Relations program, and I did, I did a postgrad certificate in user experience design uh, with a focus on user experience research. And I've been with this student association for four years, and I welcome to CSI Advocates for the Student Voice. Um, this, uh, so... As your official student association, we provide many different services. Um, advocacy is a big part of the work we do. That's how we get things moving for you at various levels of government and through the college. But we also provide food services, um, other services, including our, um, our SNAP program, um, LEND program, and other things that we provide through our service hub. We provide our shuttles. We have health and wellness. Your health plans are run through the student association, wh whether it's the extended health and dental plan or the college international um, health insurance plan, CHIP, and many other things that we do to try to make sure that you have a holistic student experience um, while you are here at college. Um, our advocacy agenda based on some of the research that we've done with students in the past is student housing is a big one. Uh, we also work fairly often with various municipalities on transit solutions. Um, we do a lot of work with academic fairness. Food insecurity has, big, a, big, has been a big part of the work we do in general um, in the past two years. And also we're always advocating for fair tuition and fees. What does that look like uh, and who represents you there? Um, as I said before, I'm the president of CSI. Um, Alexandra Ostriker is the vice president. Um, she has a lot of experience in volunteer management and is also a graduate in the diploma program of public relations. And Hayden Stewart is our new associate vice president. Um, he helps a lot with the internal work we do with our internal policies and college committees. And he's in the international business management program as well. Um, and these are eight, your eight directors that were elected um, in the previous year. Uh, we have seven directors that are elected by the general student body and one um, um, indigenous director who is appointed. We work directly with our indigenous department, Beta Bingamic, and they within themselves are able to select a student that, that wants to serve and has the capacity to, and I recommend them to CSI. And then we go to them and, um, and offer them the position and they're able to join our board. So these eight board of directors represents you as our students and as, our, as the owners of the organization and make sure that the organization stays on track with our long-term vision to serve students. 
Um, this board is strictly a governance board, and myself and my executive team, we handle a lot of the operations at CSI. Um, how can you get involved in your student experience? We always encourage you to read reports. We post a lot of our reports online on our website. Um, if you have any issues that you feel like our advocacy department can help you handle, we encourage you to contact our advocacy department at CSI Advocacy at Conestoga uh, at uh, Conestoga C I can put the email in the chat. Um, I'm always encouraging any students who wants to get involved to run for the board of directors. That's the way I was able to get into CSI. I started as a board of director in my final year of my Bachelor of Public Relations program. Um, the elections are in the elections are usually in February and March. So keep an eye out for those communications. And if you have anyone who you feel um would want to be part of the organization and want to in, impact change uh, within the college, I always encourage students to to join the board because you get to work for students and and advance the student movement. Um, we're always sending out surveys uh to figure out ways to be better for you, to be a better organization for you. So when you see those surveys coming through your emails or when we promote them on our Instagram page pages, please fill them out as well. Um, oftentimes we do focus groups, whether it's internal to the organization or through collaborations with stakeholders like the city of Waterloo, um, the city of Kitchener, the region, whatever it is, we're always doing focus groups that we encourage students to be a part of. Some of the work that we've done in the past was having students be um, part of the focus group for the visioning for downtown Kitchener. Um, the city of Kitchener has been working to revitalize um, the downtown core and they wanted to get the student perspective on that. And so they reached out to CSI and CSI was able to help organize some focus groups with students so that the student perspective is included in that as well. Um, we will often host a town hall um, on any issues. Our next town hall right now is gonna be at our Guelph campus as we'll be uh, doing a UPASS referendum for our Guelph students, similar to what we have at our, at our Waterloo, Kitchener and Waterloo campuses and our Brantford campuses as well. Um, our annual general meeting is a legal obligation for us. That will be taking place the week of October 14th. But we encourage you to come in there and see the progress that we've done for you in the last year. We'll be we will be reporting our audited financials um, and our annual reports, which showcases a lot of the work that we've done for you over the last year. And that way you also get to meet and engage with the board of directors and myself and ask any questions, any clarifying questions that you might have um, regarding any of the work that we've done or any of the things that we'll be working on this year. And for our Indigenous students, we always encourage them to join the Indigenous Circle. Um, it's one of our ways uh, that we use to connect with our Indigenous brothers and sisters, to hear the voices, make sure that we're being intentional about the work that we do with our Indigenous partners and, and continue to, to progress the work over there. Um, within CSI, we also have the Student Advocate Program. And this program sort of provides peer-to-peer -peer support through the academic appeals process. We often get a lot of emails from students who are who um, feel they have been unfairly graded or uh, there's an issue with their professor or anything like that. And when when those kind of things come forward, uh, we 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 decided to create a student advocate program to help guide students through the process. Now we don't do the advocating for you but we do provide guidance and teach you how to advocate for yourself because it's important for us that you as students learn how to advocate for your for yourselves too through any of these academic processes so we'll help you determine if you have a grounds for the appeal when we when our when our student leaders meet with you and then we'll provide any general information we have about the appeals process um provide resources to help set you up for success and then teach you how to self-advocate. Now, what, what that means usually is that if you send me an email or advocacy department an email, they will set up a meeting with you and listen to your story and take as many notes as possible. They will figure out where in the academic appeals process you are because there are certain steps within the college that you have to take for an academic appeals process. And if you are just beginning, whether you're just beginning or you've reached the second or third step of the academic appeals process, a student's advocate program will be there to help you through it. Um, and and give you advice, give you guidance, give you resources on ways you can go back to your program coordinator, your chair, your dean, or your professor to help advocate for yourself, to make sure that you, the process of the academic appeal, appeals is fair and to potentially help you get the best result possible should there be a need for academic appeals. 
And so I'm going to talk a lot about, I'm going to talk about our advocacy efforts right now. Uh, we do advocate at the college, um, municipal, provincial, and federal levels. And so at the college level, we have a lot of representation on college committees and board of governors. Uh, I myself sit on a few committees, as well as Hayden, our, our associate um, uh, vice president. That way, we are involved in a lot of key decisions and can use that to pivot our, our, our services or our resources for students. But also, when we have any major concerns that we hear from students, these committees give us a direct line to those uh, to college administration so that we can begin to solve those issues as, as fast as we possibly can and reach a solution, the best possible solution that we can. Um, talked a lot about academic appeals and student concerns too. Um, Oftentimes, if the if we're able to help students through the academic appeals process and they self advocate and they reach a stop gap, um, I often am able to step in as president to just meet with the chair of the program or the the program coordinator to further help in the process. Um, now I have no influence on academic decisions. Um, CSI has no influence on academic decisions when it comes to advocating for students. What I, but what I can do as president in my space is try to at least help um, professors and the program coordinators and chair see the student perspective and try to be more understanding in whatever decisions that they make so that like we help students actually achieve success instead of hindering them from, from achieving their potential kind of thing. Um, improved college spaces and services. The college has grown immensely, and a lot of the work that we do is with the college is to make sure that yes, even though classrooms are needed, that there are college, there there are lounges and college spaces and places for students to congregate and connect and have fun together um, outside of like just place spaces to study. And so we do a lot of advocating for that with the college as well. Um, and our work is continuous. It in the college and through provincial government for fair tuition and fees to make sure that students don't feel exploited and like when they're paying their fees, they're actually getting their money's worth. Um, for municipal advocacy, we have a, quite a bit of representation on municipal committees in Kitchener and Waterloo. Um, those relationships have been built really well over the last two years. And we're currently working to expand our relationships in the city of Guelph, Brantford, and Milton now with our new campuses there, so that we are able to get on those committees and make sure that any of the budgeting that the city is, um, that those cities are working on, include things that will affect our students. And so a lot of the work that we do um, in municipal governments is transit related. So when it comes to um, public trans transit, like buses, iron trains, any of that things, we make sure that we're advocating for proper bus stops with coverage with covered shelters, improved routes uh, to make sure that our students aren't stranded at bus stops and and and, and late to class. Um, for housing, the municipal level is really just a lot of bylaw and zoning advocacy that we do. So we often go to city councils to advocate for any new builds that will accommodate affordable, affordable housing for our students and to increase the capacity of any builds that are on there. So that means that um, if there are if there are height limits, certain height limits on, on any pieces of land, uh, we often advocate to the city to say, hey, we, we have a lot of students in the city who need more affordable housing. Uh, we would like to advocate for you to change the zoning here so that the height of the building can increase, which means more, um, more housing for our students, while also encouraging them to um, let developers know that affordable housing should be included in any of the bills that they're building as, as well. So um, that is some of the work that we do in terms of municipal advocacy. We're often meeting with the mayors and city councilors um, outside of delegating at their council meetings just to have these discussions as well. Um, for provincial advocacy, we have all, we've done a lot of good work in the last year of representation in uh, government consultations and roundtables. Just earlier this year, we met with the Standing Committee on Social Policy to let um, to advocate to the Ministry of Colleges and Universities that any policies that impact students, the student voice should be included because it seemed like they were always making policies that impacted students without actually consulting with students um, in that aspect. So uh, always advocating for, for our students through, through those committees. 
But the most important thing that we've done so far is also building relationships with our local MPPs, because they're the ones that will hear our voices and take our concerns directly into the House of Commons and speak on our behalf, because they represent our region, um, our different regions where our campuses are. Um, to advance the work at Provincial Advocacy Group, CSI, as well as six other colleges, have created the Ontario Student Voices, which, which with the purpose of amplifying college and polytechnic voices across Ontario. Uh, the organization is two years old and CSI was a founding member and we're working really hard for our first advocacy week in November, where we'll be meeting with different MPPs um, out in Queens Park in, um, in Toronto uh, to discuss some of our advocacy areas of focus this year, which are listed on the screen, like student financial aid, student tuition, um, student jobs, mental health, and more. So that work continues very, very much so uh, through our provincial advocacy group. And finally, on the federal level, pretty much the same thing that we do with our provincial advocacy. Uh, the only difference is oftentimes we are traveling to Ottawa to meet with uh, different MPs and to meet with our student leaders from across the country. So we're members of the Canadian Alliance of Student Association, which currently has 26 uh, member schools from coast to coast to coast, uh, from BC to Alberta to UP to uh, Prince Edward's Islands to Nova Scotia. And I think very soon actually, as well. And um, a lot of the work that we do includes coming up with well-researched policies um, and recommendations so that when we go to our um, to our federal um, MPs, they, they take us seriously. Because oftentimes when you're in those meetings and we're talking about students' needs, they love to hear the stories that, that we have from students. They understand the struggles because many of them up on Parliament Hill were student leaders themselves but they often need well-researched data to actually like make informed decisions through the various departments, whether it's through the Minister of Finance or the IRCC or whatever department it is. And so us as student leaders come together often and we have um, a, federal policy a federal policy manual that includes it's up to 500 pages of every policy or every area of research uh, or every area of advocacy that we want to advocate to our federal MPs. And so every year we pick our priorities based on what our different students are seeing from across the country. Um, and we work towards advocating for that with MPs in November as well. And I think for this year, the top three was again, student financial aid, student jobs and student housing followed by mental health resources, open educational, res uh, open educational um, resources, graduate research and, and other things, um, as well as indigenous uh, students access to post-secondary support. Um, and so, this is this is a combination of a lot of the work that we do in federal advocacy. It's a big part of the work we do because yes, as your student association, we wanna provide services and supports to make sure that you have a holistic student experience. But what we've realized as, and what other student associations have realized is our students are facing much more complex programs, uh, much more complex problems that can only be solved through actually going to actual policymakers and decision makers and encouraging them to make those changes for us. And so we have expanded our advocacy um, efforts um, through collaboration with other student associations, through collaborations with other stakeholders like CASA and OSV, um, and working together to make sure that like we're continuously pushing for better post-secondary education in Canada. Um, and yeah, that's it. Um, I said quite a bit there. I'm happy to answer any questions that any of you might have um, regarding any of the things I've just spoken about. How would we find out about um, workshops or, or town halls that are those posted on CS CSI site? Yes, yes, Duncan. So yes, a lot of our workshops or town halls will be posted on our CSI social media. And oftentimes our comms team will also send it out through our newsletter emails that we send to students as well. 
So just keep an eye out on, especially our Instagram is where we engage, the, is where our students are most engaged. So we'll, we'll post that often through there as well. No problem, Duncan. Any other questions? Going once, going twice. All right, awesome. So um, thank you so much for your time. I'm gonna encourage you to, to keep reaching out, try your best to stay engaged. Um, to get involved in this student experience, you can also um, be, you can also join our board meetings. Um, our minutes are posted online and all of our documents are available for you to see through our website. Oh, Drew, yeah, the Insta is C Students Inc. right here on Instagram. Post it in the chat right now. Awesome. So um, thank you so much for your time. Please get involved in CSI. I'm always happy to answer any questions you may have. I'm going to put my email in the chat. Actually, I did have another um, quick thing. Sure. Uh, so with the uh, college being part of the UPASS now, yes. uh, I understand that uh, they've gotten rid of the shuttle uh, from Reuter to uh the other campuses and to uh to sports world um is there any chance of bringing that back or is it yeah, uh... um we've been we've been dealing with that for the past week and the thing that a lot of people need to know about that is that we actually started that route last year as a pilot program um while we figured out while we continue to figure out the upass um but we had very, very low ridership. It was only about four or five people using that route um, um, from the residence to Reuter. And so when we we, we always we change our shuttle routes um, for the fall semester of every year. However, knowing now knowing that um, there is quite a bit of interest in bringing that back, what we've done is actually our busiest routes based on the survey data that we got from last year was in the morning. So we've we brought that back temporarily um, for this um, for a seventh. So that's the answer I have for you right now. We're still working on it, but we've been able to provide a temporary solution for that, Duncan. Okay. I, I've also sent an email to the CSI advocacy thing with a bit more detail about some things that can happen with GRT specifically. Okay. Um, do you, you've sent it to our CSI advocacy department, you said? Yeah, I was just in the past 15 minutes, so. Okay, awesome. All right, they will they will probably forward that out to me and I'll take a look, I'll take a look at it as well. Uh, but cool. so far, has the UPAS has been serving you well? Oh yeah, yeah, it's great. I mean, um, like as far as sports world, the connection between Reuter and sports world is kind of bad, but um, otherwise, yeah, it's been good. Okay, awesome. All right, um, I'll take a look at that email and um, encourage any of your other colleagues from Reuter campus because the the faster we get the feedback on any, because this is the you pass those that routes to Reuter just started, so the faster we're able to get feedback from you as our students, the faster we can take it back to GRT and begin to work on solutions for you there. Okay. Yeah. Awesome. Thank you so much. All right. Um, is there any other questions or concerns from Earl Dhruv? Or Duncan, if you have any other concerns, I'm happy to, to hear them too. It's better described with images. So it's in the email. Okay. All right. Sounds good. Okay. Um, thank you so much for your time, beautiful people. Um, like I said, my email is in the chat. Uh, my email is in the chat. Um, if you ever have anything anything you want to talk about, send me an email. I'm happy to set a Zoom meeting or meet in our CSI office to sit down and have a coffee and just chat about stuff, okay? Thank you so much.
Recording.